All right, welcome everybody. My name is Robert Gorder with Charcoal Expressions. Today we're going to take on the canoe. Um, we are based out of Baraboo, Wisconsin, and we have um, a state park called Devil's Lake. I encourage everybody to visit it at some point. Uh, we are quite spoiled by it. Um, it is a, just a beautiful, beautiful place. And this uh, drawing we're going to be doing today called Canoe is actually uh, inspired by Devil's Lake. So we're going to have some fun with that. Uh, this is going to be a good study on doing some simple grass. Um, we're going to take on drawing a canoe, which I think is the most challenging part, as well as the bluffs in the background. So this is the canoe drawing and let's get started. Uh, let's go through the supplies we're going to need today. Um, we're going to need the piece of paper with the rectangle on it. It's going to give us the guides we need. Uh, we're going to need our trusty T-square. Um, you can get your supplies ready. I'll go through all these. We have our stick of charcoal, which we're going to need. We should have a soft pencil. We should have a white charcoal pencil. Try to wait till the very end of the event to use that. Got two of these blending tools. Got our pencil sharpener. Got uh, these two erasers. We've got the triangle eraser that's going to give us some nice uh, broad erasing strokes. We've got this little black round one. Uh, and then we've got the kneaded rubber eraser works as a blending tool and an eraser both. Uh, definitely works best if you play with it for a while. Uh, I, you know, I, I know a lot of the new ones are a really bright gray, but I can tell you that uh, I really like using the older ones that are used for about uh, anywhere from you know six months to a year. Uh, we should have our blue blending towel. Yours is probably a little cleaner than this one. Oh, if you're a first time, if this is your first one, uh, welcome. So we offer subscription boxes as well as all the supplies you'll ever need. And if you're in the Wisconsin area, uh, we do I do live in-person events on a regular basis. Uh, we're also going to need some kind of cutting tool for our erasers. So I have some dog nail clippers here. So when these two erasers uh, get rounded out, uh, or, or like super dirty. Um, I can clip off as little as possible here just to make them straight again. All right, we should also have our mat, one of the mats that are in the kit, and uh, you should have some hairspray available. Try to pick a hairspray that doesn't have any water in it. Uh, that seems to work best. That's going to set our charcoal. Um, we should be mounted on the plexiglass. All right. Let's get started here on the canoe. So the first thing we're going to do is create a gray tone throughout the entire throughout the entire picture. So we're going to take our stick of charcoal that we have. I typically break mine in half. You might have a whole one. So we're just going to lay this flat on the paper, and we're just going to cover it. So again, no experience is necessary for this. I've been doing this for quite a few years. Um, I don't think I have any disappointed customers at all. I'm here to inspire you and kind of take the intimidation out of charcoal drawing in itself. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised when you're done on what you've created. So, we're going to get a bunch of charcoal on here just like this. Then we're going to uh, hold it with one hand, take our blending towel, I leave it just like it is in the square. I'm just going to do some simple circles. As you can tell, it's just a little bit spotty here, so I'm going to take my charcoal one more time. Kind of go through it. What you want is 
for it to be as smooth as possible. Now we are going to go through most of this picture from top to bottom or bottom to top. So don't be too concerned if it's not perfect. And everybody's is going to be a little bit different. Some are going to be darker, some are going to be lighter. Alright, so we should have something approximately like that. Doing good so far. Now, we need to create our horizon. So this is, uh, primarily this picture is a bluff hill in the background, typically made of just rocks, especially at Devil's Lake. And we're going to have a lake below it, and then kind of a shoreline with a canoe. So we're going to take our T-square, like so. When we use the T-squares, always against the plexiglass, either from the top or from the left. And the measurements are from the plexiglass too, not from the rectangle. All right, so we're going to take our T-square. Now, it doesn't matter where. We can go right in the middle if we want to. Uh, we're going to take our T-square from the top. We're going to come down with our soft pencil. Make a mark at 7 inches. Okay, then we're going to take our T-square from the left. Again, against the plexiglass. Line it up with that 7-inch mark and draw a line all the way across. Like so. So we can set our T-squares aside for the moment. Now what we need to do is create the bluff itself. So you're going to use your stick of charcoal and we're just going to lay it flat just like we did and just create kind of the, the top line of what you want to see. Okay, so something, something like that. Okay, then we can certainly fill in a little bit of this. We're going to want this a little bit darker so that we can erase some rocks and put some trees in there. I'm going to go like this, then I suggest taking one or two fingers, holding this, just kind of rubbing that in. Now it doesn't have to be, I, I don't want it to be perfectly black, it can be, we can certainly correct that. But we want some variation in there as well. We can use the texture of the paper to create some of those rocks. Okay, next, we're going to take our kneaded eraser next, I'll play with it for a little while. If this ever stops working for you, uh, all you'd have to do is tear it apart, put it back together, play with it for a while, and you'll be fine. So what we're going to do with this is we're going to lighten up our sky. We want our sky to be a little bit brighter so we have some really good contrast on the drawing itself. So I'm going to take this, make it into kind of a blunt point. I'm going to work only horizontal. Uh, it is okay if we go into our hill. Uh, actually, I encourage that because then we can just put this line right back. So I'm going to work horizontal. Again, flipping it over when it doesn't work as well. All right. Now, if you wanted any brighter you can certainly take your triangle eraser. You know, we can brighten this up just a little bit more if you want to. I encourage you to make this drawing your own. You should personalize it. But that's approximately what we're looking for, is just like that. Now let's go into our hill itself. Now we're going to need to, if we need to, Kind of correct this. We can do that again with our stick of charcoal. I'm just going to push it in in the same direction with my finger. Now what I'd like to do is take our kneaded eraser. We're going to use kind of a dabbing effect to create some of those rocks. Okay, so we can come through here, kind of push and turn, flip it over. All right, just pick some areas. Uh, you can actually take it out of blunt point too and not turn it as often. And you can lighten up certain areas. I do little circles, it's a little more natural. So what you want is uh, this black area is actually going to be like a tree line. Okay, now we're gonna put some of those trees back in. Just gonna go like this, go through. So 
want to almost touch every bit of charcoal we have in here. Just a little bit. Try to keep the bottom of that black kind of as straight as possible in those areas. Okay, so we should have something approximately like this. Now we can go ahead and put some of the darker trees in. So with our stick of charcoal or a pencil, if you want to use your pencil, that's perfectly fine. But I'm going to put some trees. Again, I'm using like the, the short end. So I'm going to go up a little bit. Like so. I'm not going to push them in too much, but I want some that kind of protrude past the hill going in a vertical area. Okay, come down to our next level. here and down to the water okay so we're looking for something up like this now in some of these areas it's kind of spotty in the middle what I'm going to do is take my finger right just gently kind of take some of those spots out. Okay, now we can take it or need an eraser back and say some of this stuff got a little darker and we want to highlight some of it. We can certainly go through and highlight some of that. finish our trees up. So we're going to take our pencil now and these are primarily pine trees so I'm just going to kind of do like this little zigzag effect you know so if we have the trunk here you know just put some little tops on it. Typically it's, trees are going to be uh, wider at the base Feel free to just add little pieces. All right, to get some trees in there, we could take our triangle eraser and we can actually erase some of the big rocks out it if you want to. So we're going to take this. I'm going to use one of the three sides. I'm just going to lay it flat. Again, I hold this thing upside down, kind of like in your fist. Okay. So we're going to go through like so. Again, I like to work in lots of tiny little circles. And it's about pressure here. The more you push, the more it comes off. The less you push, the less it comes off. So you can kind of scrape some off, or you can create a nice big, nice big rock like this. Just gonna go through here. Add some little rocks or some little highlights.
Okay, next. And take our little eraser. Now let's highlight some of the sides of these trees. So in this drawing, our light source or sun is going to be on the kind of the top far right, shining down. So that means we need to highlight our trees on the right hand side. Okay, so we're just going to come through. I'm going to use it kind of on the side. Come through and highlight some of these trees. Doesn't have to be much, but we should do something. Now we are going to use a little bit of white at the very end. It's going to highlight those just a little bit more. Maybe this is just a kind of a dead tree. So it's just going to be primarily straight. So as you can see with this eraser that I've been using, it's kind of getting rounded out. So I'm going to clip off just a little bit here so I can come back and use kind of that sharper edge. Put uh, again, not not that it's in my original one, but maybe I'll want to put uh, maybe a small path in it. It's kind of a cool idea. So we can come through. We're going to kind of put a highlighted path in, or something that kind of resembles a path. Maybe I'll just shadow it just a little bit. Okay, so have fun with that background. I think that looks pretty good. All right, next we need to find out where the shoreline is going to go, right? So, got our sky, got our hill. This is going to be our water, but now we need to know how far down to go. So I'm going to refer back to my original picture, just to kind of give us a baseline here. Looks like we're going to go down to about 11 inches. So we're going to take our, actually, I think we're going to take. Now we can take our soft pencil. I'm going to line it up on now the right hand side of the rectangle. Go down to 11 inches and make a mark with your pencil. So set that aside. Shove our 11 inch mark right here. It should be on the rectangle. Okay. Then we're going to take our stick of charcoal and we're going to make our shoreline. So we're just going to make kind of a, a rounded edge here. And then we're going to go kind of up and over, like that. Okay, so we can fill this in just a little bit. Again, giving us some nice contrast. And take our finger, kind of like what we did up here. Make sure you're working above and beyond that original rectangle line. Because after we map this, we don't want it to all of a sudden I'll uh, be showing after we met. Okay, we can also, so this stuff to me doesn't seem quite smooth enough yet, so I'm going to take my big blending tool. We're going to use it on the side, not the tip. Right, and we can come through here 
and do some circles. Just kind of smooth this out. Again, we're starting at our 11, kind of working our way over down past the rectangle. I like to roll this thing when it's in my fingers every once in a while. Okay, I think that's better. These ever get too dirty for you too. They're not quite working well enough. You can certainly run it or kind of roll it over your kneaded eraser. It'll take some of that charcoal out of the point. Okay, so that's good there. Now let's go to our water. So with our light source being on the way far top right, and say it's going to be somewhat behind the hill, right? So this hill is actually going to cast a shadow onto the water. So we're going to take our stick of charcoal. I'm going to hold it on the, uh, the short lengthwise like this. I'm going to go across that horizon. Hold your paper. Across the horizon like so. So it's going to be thinner here and then it's going to kind of come all the way down to the shore. So now we can hold it flat. I do this zigzag pattern. So we should have something like this. We want this to be really black over here, so it puts a good amount down. Now we're going to take our finger. We're going to work from the black over here, all the way up to your shoreline, go all the way across, and then only work horizontal. Don't go up and down. Kind of fill in any of these little spots. Now we're going to go through and erase some of this to make it look more like water. But it should end on kind of a point. Like so. Now it's a good time to decorate yourself. Okay. So, there's the start to our water. Now we're going to take our kneaded eraser next. Again, play with it for a little bit. So this time we're going to put it in more of a uh, a pancake with kind of a flat edge, like so. Okay, so I want to be working this way. Again, we're only going to be working horizontal, so it's flat like this. Okay, so we're going to start here. We're going to kind of work our way over. Again, only working horizontal, flip it every once in a while. Kind of roll it around. Now this is step one. With the highlight of the water, we're going to use our other eraser and really get in there and highlight it here in a second. So we want to gradually go towards the bottom left. So we have something like this. Then what we can do is take your triangle eraser. Now you can go through. So we want everything on the left as we're highlighting it to kind of end in a point. Right, and try to stay as horizontal as possible. Okay, so we should have something like that. Now, be careful. I see a lot of people think that they're drawing horizontally or racing horizontally and it ends up being like 
uh, like a little rainbow. So you can certainly take your T-square coming in here and check yourself. You know, you can certainly put some in that are perfectly straight. Or honestly, it's art, so if you want it in a different pattern, go right ahead. So just put some of those in there just to check myself. Okay, on to our canoe. So, again, I'm going to refer back to my original picture. Looks like that canoe is going to start at about nine inches down on the right hand part of the rectangle. So take your pencil, make a mark at nine inches. Okay, so now we're going to take our, so now we have, we should have a nine inch mark here. I'm going to take our T square like so, line it up with our nine. Just make sure. Okay, so there's our nine, right? Make sure we're all centered here. So we're at nine. We're going to drop it just a little bit. Make a mark at six. A little bit meaning like maybe a quarter of an inch or a half of an inch. So if you obviously, if you want to measure, you certainly can. Okay, I'm going to drop it just a little bit further. So why we're dropping it is because that front left point of the canoe is actually going to be closer to us. Okay, and this part is going to be more behind us. All right. I believe this is the most challenging part of the drawing itself. Here's what we're going to do. It's kind of like drawing a banana. Kind of. Now, we have our top left corner of the canoe here. We have our back right corner of the canoe that's going to be primarily on the edge of the rectangle. Now, I need to figure out how long I want this end of the canoe to be. So I want that canoe to be about an inch and a quarter. So if I find a whole number like four on my T-square and I'm going to line it up with this mark. Okay. Now the key to making this canoe look much more realistic is actually we're going to tilt that front corner. So we want it to be more like 30 degrees maybe, like this. Okay, so now I want to take my pencil and draw down, draw a line, because again, I'm on a whole number. All I want is one and a quarter inches, approximately. Just like that. Okay, now this back one is going to be, should, should be the same angle. So we can take our T-square like this, we can line it up with the angle, and we can carefully scoot it over. Now this one needs to be a little bit shorter, so maybe I'll make this one an inch. Okay, so we should have something like that. Okay, so there's kind of the perspective angle of our canoe. Now what we need to do is make a rounded bottom. I'm going to sharpen my pencil here. Okay, so we're going to make a rounded bottom, or this bottom corner. So we're going to bring this around, like so, and then and we're going to draw all the way back to this one. Like so. So it should look somewhat like our canoe is on shore. We're going to go back up to this corner. Then we want to make our, our big banana swoop here. Okay, so we're going to dip down. And it's probably going to go down a little further than you think. And then back up. Okay, we should have something like that. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. We want to kind of follow the same angle. So this end is going to come around. 
is going to, now obviously it's going to be a little wider here, so it should have an angle approximately like this. So in the middle, you could make a little angle for the middle here. Come around, and then back to this corner. I guess we should have somewhat of kind of a banana shape. Like that. Okay, so don't forget about this middle. Like I said, it should be at about this angle. Just like that. Okay, so if anything, look at the size of this triangle. Right? So try to visualize this being a triangle in here. And this is the angle we want. And approximately in the middle. You probably should have a little bit more up here than you do back here. All right, so now let's shadow this. So we're gonna take our pencil. The bottom is going to be pretty dark, right? Because if our sun is way over here, right way back here, it's gonna cast a shadow definitely on this corner. So we're gonna take our pencil. Now I'm gonna hold it again like in my fist. Use the side of it, make sure it's not too short that the the wood of the pencil is going to dig into your paper, so we're going to go around the back like this. Maybe I should round this one up just a little bit. Alright, so we're going to go like this. It's going to be the darkest, and it's going to kind of work our way up. Like that. So now we can take our finger carefully from here, kind of push some of that charcoal up. And if that doesn't work for you, you can certainly take your blending tool, using it on the side again, and kind of get all that together. We want it to seamlessly go from dark to light. Okay. Now, I see somewhat of a little mistake I have here because it comes down awfully nice. And then it kind of goes boop down here and then over. Well, I actually want this to be more round like that. certainly fix that with my blending tool. So we're going to need a shadow underneath the canoe as well, right? So we're going to take our stick of charcoal carefully, just using the little short edge. We're going to come straight through like so. All right, let me do something like that. I think I want this a little more rounded like this. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Something like that. Not so worried, not so worried about the back. Okay, most canoes have that lip that goes all the way around. That's what this black line is going to represents we're just going to make that a little bit thicker. It should get thicker as you come forward You're towards the front of the boat. Feel free to, you know, make a nice little edge over here. We're going to erase some of that in. Take my blending stump and get rid of kind of that little line I had there. So I can clean up. So this, you know, got kind of icky down here. I can certainly take my eraser using the edge of it. You know, clean up that canoe and clean up that line. So show something like that. Um, now, you can put whatever seat configuration you want inside of here. I just put a single seat in the middle. Um, you know, typically there's going to be one 
and I'm nowadays in the front. So we could do something like that. And we could do something back here. Just make sure all of these are approximately the same angle. Okay. Now I'm just gonna put this brace here. Now the reason I didn't I didn't go all the way to the black line here is because if this seat is kind of inset, you know, or down, it, it's not mounted to the ledge, it's mounted beneath it. So it's actually mounted kind of in the middle of the canoe. Okay, so we should have something like that. Maybe I'll put uh, a little seat here. Okay, so now let's highlight the tip. So we're gonna take our little eraser here. Don't worry, we're gonna use our white pencil pretty soon here. So got that end, kind of that end. So let's go ahead and grab our white pencil. We can highlight. You know, we use the white pencil for wherever you think the sun is going to hit directly. All right, so we have a little bit there. We probably have a little bit on the inside here. I don't know what color your canoe is. Now feel free if you have any colors with you. You can color the inside of your canoe or the outside. You can make it green or red. Now if you have any um, colored charcoal or colored pastels, uh, that would certainly work. So there is our canoe. I think I'm going to bring this shadow down just a little bit further. So using my blending stump here. I'm not too worried about this, this end over here. We're going to make uh, plenty of grass over here. Maybe that could come up just a little bit for me. So it's kind of like we're still in the water, but we're not. Uh, before we do the grass, I'm going to go ahead and highlight our hills up here. Okay. So if you have any, again, and any place that you feel the sun is hitting directly, just go ahead and put some little highlights. It makes a huge difference. Um, again, think about like if these are separate rocks. You know, the sun is here and it's hitting some of those. Or maybe kind of on our somewhat of a pathway. Maybe some of our trees. Okay, then we can do some of our water if we want to. You know, this works best if if it's erased first. So don't try to draw into some of the black because then it just gets kind of this gray mushy tone. Okay. Look in good. I'm gonna fix a few things here. Just gonna put the little horseshoe there for the end. Okay, on to grass. So now we're gonna put some grass primarily in this section here. And what I wanna do is I wanna erase that out first, not draw it in. Okay, so I'm gonna use my triangle eraser. Again, mine got kinda of rounded out, so I'm gonna clip off as little as possible here. Now, again, holding it like in your fist, right? Not, not like a pencil, but actually in your fist we're going to erase some grass. I don't want to see grass that's like all the same length, you know, and it's very even. This should go everywhere. So mine, so you're going to use one of the three sides, all right? So off of the paper here, I'll show you. You can get super thin lines if you want to, or you can get some broad lines, just tilt a little bit. Okay, so one of the three side, sides, make sure that it's clean we're going to start off of the paper, working our way up, right? Over and over and over. Right? Maybe start at the shore 
here, and then we go down off of the paper. You know, I've uh, had a lot of people put little reeds in it, or, uh, uh, you know, like little seeds on the end. Um, you could do whatever kind of, like maybe your favorite water plant, um, like a, oh, what do they call those things with the corn dog on the end? Um, you know what I mean. Okay, now as we go down to the bottom of the right, we want this grass to kind of, kind of fall away. Now you could put a picnic basket over here, um, you could put an oar, you could put, um, you know, a fish jumping. Uh, sky's the limit here. So just keep that in mind, because we're almost done here. So the next step to the grass is, what do we need to do? We need to shadow it. So I'm going to sharpen my pencil. Okay, sharpen my pencil. What we need to do is, if our light source is on the top right, each, be, each blade of grass is then going to be shadowed on the left. So you don't have to do every single blade, but we're going to go through and kind of do the exact same thing, but we want to shadow it. So just kind of try to go as much as possible with the blades of grass that you have. Short, long, narrow, thin. Okay. Then you can take your white pencil carefully. Don't smudge out, you know, don't rest your hand here unless you have a note card or something. Uh, I don't want you to smudge out your canoe here, so just be careful. So we can take our white pencil, and then we can do the other end of it. Just make sure it's sharp, and just use it freely. Make sure they overlap a little bit. All right, there you go. So now we have our canoe drawn. Like I said, um, you could do anything to this. You could put, uh, you know, like, like fishing poles, you know, kind of sticking out. Um, you could do a picnic basket over here. Um, you could do like little footprints. Um, you could leave somebody's flip-flops laying there. That is truly the fun of these drawings because you can create whatever you want and it's so easily correctable. I mean, if we drew a picnic basket down here and we didn't like it. Um, you could easily just grab your charcoal, smudge over it, take your towel, and kind of just put it right back to where you started. Um, charcoal is super forgiving. I really love it. So there's our canoe drawing. Um, that was fun. Now what we're going to do is, uh, after this is complete, uh, we're going to actually take it off of the plexiglass like so. So here it is. I'm going to take it off of our plexiglass. So I always start with the tape from the back. Um, I use yellow frog tape for these. Um, I've tried all the blue tapes and it doesn't seem to come off of the paper nearly as well as this yellow. So the trick is instead of just ripping it off, kind of peel it back towards the paper. Right? Comes off. So, um, did forget to mention you should sign your work. So I'm gonna this time because I have a nice black area towards the bottom right. I'm gonna take my white pencil. Now make sure when you sign this, you're a quarter of an inch inside that original rectangle that I printed on there for you. So I'm just going to put my name and maybe the year. So that's off. Plexiglass, you get put aside. Now you can grab your mat. Everybody should have a show kit. 
in with them. Okay, so we have this. I'm going to take our hairspray. Unless you want to use an actual fixative, go ahead. We'll take our hairspray, like so. So here's our picture. All we need to do is lightly, like so, kind of let it dry off. Uh, if, it, if you see any dark spots or some shiny spots, you can certainly blow on it. Okay, take our show kit, take the mat off, put the paper in, put the mat back on, and there you have it. We have our very nice canoe drawing, just like so. And then, um, all you need to do is find an 11 by 14 frame, put it in that frame, hang it up. It's your new masterpiece. All right. Thank you guys for joining me today for the canoe drawing, and I hope to see you next time. Um, I know, what do we have coming up? We have the, the cow is coming up, the desert moonlight is coming up, and um, the August... August picture should be coming up, uh, being posted soon, what we're going to do in August. Um, as I tell all of my customers, if you have any good ideas for uh, new drawings, please message me, email me, I'll make sure to compensate you in some way. Um, also if you're uh, familiar with my live events, um, I do plenty of them in Wisconsin, if you have a new venue in mind or a, um, or a new picture, um, let me know. We'll see what we can do. All right, thanks guys. Hope I took a little bit of the uh, the torture out of uh, drawing with charcoal. Hope I took some of that torture away, I should say. And uh, I will see you next time. All right, thanks. Get dirty.